What up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the Sony ZV-E10, Sony's latest camera design specifically for vloggers in mind. Let's get into the leaks, what we know, what we don't know, what we're hoping to see when this camera finally drops. Let's get in. I'm just a camera fanboy. I love cameras, so I follow all the Sony, Nikon, Canon, rumor sites, and I'm always checking them and reading up on the latest cameras and juicy things I can waste my money on. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out that Sony was dropping a new vlogging camera. Now, in my heart of Parts, I thought for sure it was gonna be the Sony ZV-2 or the latest iteration of one of my favorite cameras I've ever owned, the ZV-1. There are some flaws with this camera, but I thought, hey, slap a wider lens on and let's call it a day and let's spend some money. But needless to say, I'm not the marketing expert that I thought I was, and Sony's coming out with what they call the Sony ZV-E10. According to Sony Alpha Rumors, one of my favorite sites, they've actually been pretty dead on in the past when it comes to leaking things and predicting future drops. They have leaked Sony ZV-E10 images and some specs, so that's what we're gonna get into today. So when analyzing the ZV-E10 and seeing the leaked images, I thought I would bring out two of my cameras to do some comparison work to. First of all, obviously the ZV-1, the camera probably most likely and most similar to the ZV-E10 when it does drop, and then my A6600. Now this is my beloved crop sensor body from Sony uh, with a 24 megapixel sensor, obviously very similar to the A6600. 6400 and 6100. But when looking at the leaks, I saw that the ZV-E10 actually has a 24 megapixel CMOS crop sensor in it. Now I'm praying to the camera gods that Sony has updated the sensor and it's not the same sensor that's in the 66, 64 and 6100s because that camera's got some really bad issues and it's just an old sensor in general. We see a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, uh, a max output of 4K at 30 frames per second. I'm hoping obviously it comes with 24 frames per second as well. We have S-Log2, S-Log3, and H-Log Gamma, but according to Sony Alpha Rumors, no S-Cinetone. Now in similar things like the A7S3 and the FX3, Sony dropped those cameras without S-Cinetone and then later added those on in a firmware update. I'm hoping something like that happens in the ZV-E10 because I just love the s Cinetone log profile for editing with very minimal changes and doing, it's kind of a lazy person's perfect way to edit logs. So I hope we have s Cinetone eventually. On this first shot, we can see they've included a several things that I really like. First of all, and most importantly, they've included the three capsule clear voice internal microphone system that is on the ZV-1. Just a fantastic system, basically the best I've ever used on any camera ever. With If, you, if you're within three to five feet of your camera with this microphone system, you can get clear, professional quality sounding audio, as well as having a custom design dead cat that comes specifically for this camera, it makes it such a less bulky, less cumbersome way to cut down that wind noise. So it's really, really a great system. Very similar to the ZV-1, we have the background defocus button and product showcase functions, as well as a mic jack. Now, addition to that we don't have on the ZV-1 that we will have on the ZV-E10 is a headphone jack, but more on ports later. Uh, we do not, according to this picture and these leak, we do not have the new Sony menu system. <sighs> that is frustrating because the menu system of old, I've been using it obviously for years and years, so I'm very used to it and accustomed to it in the ZB-1 and much older Sony cameras, but the menu system is slow, it's sluggish, it's difficult to find things. Many times I find myself Googling to make it faster, to speed things up when I'm on a shoot or you know out in the field. Additionally, they also have the multi-interface hot shoe. Now, I love this hot shoe system, although I don't think Sony's done a very good job implementing accessories to fit into the system, but the idea of having wide wireless technology that you can simply click in and click out very quickly is really top notch. You should be able to get high quality external mics where you don't have to plug in. It's just a really nice thing to have. We can also clearly see that they do not have a mode dial like what is on the A6600. They instead opted for a mode button similar to what's on the ZV-1. Now, although I don't love the mode button, it still works well. I just think it's faster and easier and just more tactile to be have the mode dial. I like it, but I understand for space saving purposes why they would have to put the mode button. Also to save space, I see that they've opted to not include an EVF. Now this is a bit disappointing for me personally, and I think for many of you, you will miss out on this because if you're buying a ZV-E10, this is most likely with a crop sensor now, it could be your only camera for photography, for video, for YouTube, for vlogging, for all the things, 
This camera can probably do it all, but without an electronic viewfinder that really hinders a lot of photographers, especially in bright daylight settings or those just traditionalists that are used to putting a camera up to your eye, not having the viewfinder is kind of a big deal. So I understand with the three capsule mic, like let's take a look at it. If you have the ZV-E1 three capsule microphone and you put it on the A6600, you just don't have room for the mode dial, the uh, hot shoe and the electronic viewfinder. You just don't have enough room in that body. So we can clearly see from the picture that's why they didn't include it but I would like down the line in an ideal situation it would be really really nice to have the pop-up viewfinder that's in the RX 107 to be able to fit into the ZV-E10 I think that would just make a world of difference for photographers. One thing that I'm just like eh whatever about is I see they included the power zoom rocker on the front similar to the ZV-1 um, that's useful for like the kit lens that has a power zoom feature in it I'm not a huge fan of that kit lens but more on that later. Uh, moving on, they do have a manual control dial on the back, which I absolutely love. That's great for shutter and aperture adjustments. Now moving on to the screen, we could see it is a fully articulating screen, hopefully a fully articulating touch screen similar to the ZV-1. Love that screen. Uh, I hope they've also included the auto on off feature that's on the ZV-1 when you flip that screen closed and folded in. I love it, I think it's really great. Now let's move on to the side of the camera where we get to the ports. According to this image from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing four ports total. Very similar to the A6600 with the huge addition of the USB-C. Love that. I feel like every camera now should have USB-C in it. Just makes it so much easier for charging and charging during live stream. A whole plethora of different things. So love the USB-C. Also love that they threw a headphone jack in here. That tells me that they are expecting this to be somewhat of a high-end usable video camera. Maybe a good B camera. Next, moving on to this picture of the back of the camera. And I'm seeing a lot of similarities to all the crop sensor bodies that are in the Sony lineup right now. Not much difference to the D-pad or button layout in general I'm seeing the function button uh, I don't see really any additions at all I am seeing a little bit different grip um, I, I'm seeing more porous grips more dotted type of grip as opposed to this textured grip that's on the a6600 uh, and obviously we're seeing a different record button layout which is a huge addition love that love that they kept about three to four custom buttons we could probably custom button that d-pad as well so love the button layout I actually really like the layout overall also we can clearly see the side camera strap rings are a bit larger on the ZV-E10 that probably makes it a little more easier to add a camera strap or other accessories to. Moving on to the ergonomics and grip, judging from the picture of the guy holding it or the hand holding the camera, I'm seeing a bigger grip than the A61 and 6400, but not as big of a grip as the A6600. Now again, this is all kind of speculation judging from my hand sizes versus this person's hand size in the video, um, but it just doesn't look as big of a grip on the A6600. And according to Sony Alpha Rumors, I'm also disappointed because that probably means it does not include the NPFZ100 battery. That's the larger battery that's in the full frame cameras as well as this a6600 and that battery is significantly better almost twice as good as a smaller battery that's in the crop sensor that we're probably going to get overall as far as ergonomics go this looks really similar to the a6600 it looks a bit thinner in the pictures not as long as the 6600 so I'll probably a little bit more pocketable as far as ergonomics and size and weight go I'm really hoping this zbe 10 comes out with a vlog specific lens that Sony's designed for this camera the, the kit lens is not going to do it this kit lens that comes with it according to the pictures is an 18 to 50 3.5 to 5.6 power zoom optical stabilized lens the same kind of garbage kit lens that we see in all the crop sensor bodies so that lens is not going to be enough for most of you vloggers out there or anyone trying to take high quality youtube style uh videos that's just not going to do it and one thing we cannot see in the leaked images or videos or specs is the image stabilization i'm really hoping sony put in the optical image image stabilization internally that is in the A6600. That would really set the ZV-E10 apart from the ZV-1 and a lot of other cameras on the market by being able to have a compact camera that can shoot quality 4K with good eye tracking, autofocus, and image stabilization. Nothing on the market has that right now and if we see that in the ZV-E10, it'll be well worth the $900 or $1,000 price tag that it's gonna come with. Basically what I take from the leaked images and the leaked specs is a bigger APS-C version of the ZV-1 with the flexibility to interchange your lenses or conversely maybe an a6600 with no evf a better inboard mic and a flip out screen 
who needs the ZV-E10? That's the real question, because for a lot of vloggers, the ZV-1, the beauty of it was its size, its compact design, and its built-in lens. That, that led it to be able to be pocketable, but then whip it out at any time, and then start vlogging. That's what the beauty of the ZV-1 is. And that you kind of lose with the ZV-E10, because now you have the bulkier, additional lens system that you're gonna have to pair with it. And to get really wide, you're gonna get a somewhat bulky lens. Take a look at this picture here. Now this is a vlogging setup, if you will. This is a ZV-E10 ZV-E10 paired with a Tamron 11 to 20 f 2.8. Now that is a vlogging lens specifically. It's a wide angle, wide aperture, low light lens. That 11 millimeter with the crop factor is gonna be about a 17 millimeter on the wide. So that's perfect for vlogging, right? But take a look at the size of this lens in comparison to the camera body. It's ginormous. It's probably heavy and the zoom pops in and out externally. So it's just gonna cause all kind of balancing issues and weight issues. And I don't think many Many people are going to want to turn to that as my main vlogging setup. In my mind, what I was hearing from YouTubers and vloggers alike across the board was really you just wanted a ZV-1 with a wider lens, nothing else changing, maybe a little bit better battery life, but you definitely weren't asking for a crop sensor in the ZV-1. I think the ZV-E10 is a fantastic camera for YouTubers. I think if you're going to be a YouTuber content creator, having maybe an online presence in social media, you're going to want a camera that can do photography, videography, vlogging, and kind of do all those pretty well. And the ZV-E10 really hits the mark there. Yes, it is missing the electronic viewfinder. And yes, they don't have a small lightweight vlogging lens to really pair with this right now. But that being said, you can maybe get two to three lenses and satisfy all those needs with just one camera. And that's something that the ZV-1 just can't do. So I like the ZV-E10. I will probably buy it because I love wasting my money on cameras, but I will say this, when it comes to value, it's gonna be really touchy on what Sony prices this camera at. You guys tell me below in the comments, does the ZV-10 really satisfy your needs? Do you think you're gonna be picking it up? I love this little camera. I'm excited that Sony is continually pushing the envelope and dropping new technology. Maybe I'll sell off my ZV-1 and my A6600 and my A7S3 and the A7 III and the AFX. I'm not selling anything. Love you guys. Talk to you in the next one. Peace. Peace.